I'm honored to have the opportunity as Commissioner Designate uh, for Neighborhood and Enlargement to present you today my vision for our future relationship uh, with our neighbors and partners. First, allow me a few words about myself that are relevant for better understanding my vision for the task ahead if I'm confirmed by this House. I was born in communist Hungary. Members of my family were victims of persecution after 1956, the revolution that was brutally crushed by the Soviet army and the communist regime. This has formed my conscience ever since from very early childhood. The fall of communism opened the way for Central and Eastern European countries to rejoin free Europe. I belong to the young generation of Hungarians who made it a reality. The 2004 enlargement was a dream come true for us. Ever since, I have been working on making it a success. I have served my country and the European Union in different positions. I have learned that the interest of member states and the Union may diverge on certain issues, but their ultimate goal is the same, building a strong and successful Europe for the benefit of all. My guiding principle that I have always adhered to is synthesis. I aim to find common ground and links between the different positions and create solutions that work for all. For example, when I served as a manager at the European Commission, I was responsible for creating a uni European unitary patent. Hungary was among the fiercest opponents at first. However, I have managed to highlight the benefit to them and to many others, and we created the European unitary patent in the framework of the second successful enhanced cooperation in the EU. Building Europe is not about choosing between national or European interests, but about finding their synthesis and working for the common good. I intend to continue my work along this principle. As European Commissioner, if confirmed, I will be a bridge between the European Parliament, representing citizens directly, the Council, representing the Member States, and our neighbouring countries. Our neighbourhood is of strategic importance for the EU. Our destiny is linked with and significantly influenced by the faith of our neighbours. There is a major development gap between the EU and its neighbours. My objective will be to reduce it by unleashing the untapped potential of the region. During my mandate, I want to strengthen the EU's role in fostering security, stability and promoting prosperity in a challenging and changing neighbourhood. I want to support sustainable economic development, underpinned by a functioning market economy, strong democratic institutions, the rule of law and fundamental freedoms. We need to ensure that nobody is left behind, therefore. I want to help our partners to reinforce the social dimension of their economy in sync with their economic development. If we do not assume our responsibilities, others will take our place. We have to recognize the different realities and circumstances our partners are faced with in our neighborhood and support them with tailor-made solutions. The Western Balkans, including North Macedonia and Albania, have a clear EU accession perspective. Our job is to help them embrace the opportunities this offers, which in our eyes are own very strategic interest. Other strategic partners, such as Turkey, are however clearly moving away from European values and norms. We need to reflect how to deal with, the more, with that more effectively. Some partners have progress and reforms hindered directly by conflict, like Syria in Libya, or its fallout in Lebanon. Some countries in the East, Georgia, Ukraine, and more recently Moldova, 
and in the south, uh, Morocco and Tunisia, are showing determination, sometimes in very difficult context, to tackle reforms, others less so. Hence, intelligent differentiation across the portfolio remains key to exporting stability. Honorable members, allow me to make some specific remarks on each region, starting with the Western Balkans. This region is an integral part of Europe, and its succession perspective must be credible. This is in our geopolitical self-interest. But we need to sustain and accelerate progress more effectively through a merit-based process for each individual country. We need to focus on the real impact of the necessary reforms on the ground. We need to measure progress in increased prosperity and quality of life and freedom for the people in the region, the ultimate objective of the accession process. I intend to increase the pace of structural and institutional reforms with a strong focus on the fundamentals of the rule of law, economic development, the functioning of democratic institutions, and public administration reform. I will engage with all institutions, businesses, and civil society to accomplish this. I will continue to defend the proposal to open accession negotiations with Albania and North Macedonia. I will do all to make it happen within the shortest time frame possible. Major European leaders went to North Macedonia before the referendum on the Prespa Agreement and promised that if it passed, accession negotiations would start. Albania, too, has implemented significant reforms in the judiciary and in the administration, meeting our requests. In other words, what is at stake here is the EU's credibility in the region and beyond. I will work also to better integrate the region into the key EU policies even before accession. For example, to ensure the Western Balkans are closely associated to our Green Deal, our digital agenda, and in terms of trans-European network, in transport or energy. I will support all efforts towards good neighborly relations, the resolution of bilateral disputes. I will work together with Joseph Borrell to bring the dialogue between Belgrade and Pristina to a successful conclusion in 2020. The European Union must prepare to be ready to take on board future member, member states once the conditions are met. But I do not see a binary choice between deepening and widening. In the history of our union, the two have gone hand in hand. I will also work as a team with Joseph Borrell on our future relations with Turkey, a key partner for the EU in a wide range of fields. There is clear scope to get more out of our relations to better serve our mutual interests. As Turkey continues to play a vital role in hosting and addressing the needs of almost 4 million refugees, we should continue assisting Turkey in this and in managing increased irregular migration. However, we cannot turn a blind eye on recent worrying events. In particular, we need to address the negative developments in the rule of law and human rights, Turkey's increasingly assertive foreign policy, its provocative and illegal drilling in the eastern Mediterranean, and its recent military intervention in Syria, which further complicates a political solution to the conflict and diverts attention from the fight against ISIS. Accession negotiations have effectively come to a standstill. The next Commission should therefore start a reflection in consultation with this House and together with the Council on how to develop a strategic partnership based on common interests and rooted in existing frameworks. In our eastern neighborhood, I want to see eastern partnership strengthened in light of the ongoing consultations on its future. I will work on proposals 
for the Eastern Partnership's long-term policy objectives to be presented by the Commission in good time ahead of the Eastern Partnership Summit in Brussels in June 2020. We already have far-reaching bilateral frameworks with a number of countries like Georgia, Moldova or Ukraine. Beyond ensuring the implementation of the reforms on the ground, I want to work towards deepening sectorial co cooperation with countries that are ready. Ukraine will always receive my special attention. It is of key geopolitical importance for the EU. We will continue to support the independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity, efforts to bring the conflict in Donbas to an end and to support reforms, whether on the rule of law or the economy. We should make full use of all our tools, including the Commission's support group for Ukraine. Azerbaijan can be a key partner in the energy sector, but we have to keep the rule of law and democracy on the agenda. With Armenia, we need to focus on economic development, and with Belarus, help the country's modernization while keeping the development of core democratic values on the agenda. I will always continue working on key issues such as the rule of law, the fight against corruption, and the role of an independent media in civil society. En ce qui concerne notre voisinage sud, nos principaux défis demeurent la stabilité, la sécurité, la prospérité et la migration. Nos objectifs doivent être réalistes mais également beaucoup plus ambitieux en ce qui concerne le développement économique dans la région. Grâce au principe de plus pour plus, nous encouragerons nos pays partenaires à atteindre leur objectif de réforme. Je m'attacherai à une priorité à promouvoir à leur côté la bonne gouvernance, la protection de l'environnement et du climat en ce qui euh, ainsi qu'une approche plus efficace des questions migratoires. J'accorderai une importance absolue à la croissance économique et la réussite des politiques d'emploi, en particulier vis-à-vis -vis des jeunes. Pour réussir, nous devons mettre à jour nos priorités en prenant compte les besoins et les intérêts propres à chacun de nos partenaires. Le Maroc, par exemple, est dans une dynamique de modernisation très prometteuse. Nous devons le soutenir tout comme la Tunisie et la Jordanie. En coopération étroite avec Joseph Borrell, j'ai l'intention de formuler rapidement de nouvelles propositions pour les priorités de partenariat pour intensifier nos relations avec ces pays, engagés dans les réformes exigeantes. Les relations avec la Libye et la Syrie sont plus complexes. Le premier de mes objectifs sera de travailler à rétablir et protéger le paix et la stabilité en coordination avec les Nations Unies. La stabilité de l'Égypte est également essentielle pour l'ensemble de la région. Nous continuerons à soutenir les réformes économiques et politiques. En même temps, nous continuerons notre dialogue étroit en matière de droit de l'homme. Nous allons travailler sans relâche, enfin, en partenariat sur la migration avec nos partenaires du Sud. Nous utiliserons tous les instruments à notre disposition pour atteindre nos objectifs. Nous mettrons l'accent principalement sur la lutte contre le chômage des jeunes. Nous lutterons également contre la migration irrégulière, la traite et des êtres, la traite des êtres humains et le trafic illicite de migrants. Cela doit aussi inclure le soutien au contrôle des frontières, des mécanismes de réadmission et des retours qui fonctionnent. Une meilleure promotion de la mobilité et des programmes de migration légale nous sera également mutuellement bénéfique. Nous devons soutenir le Liban et la Jordanie, deux pays qui accueillent un nombre très, très important de réfugiés. Nous devrons enfin soutenir les retours volontaires en Syrie si les principaux fondamentaux liés au retour volontaire sûr et digne des réfugiés sont respectés 
en étroite coordination avec le Haut Commissariat des Hauts Réfugiés des, des Nations Unies. Honorable Members, to help support the EU's policy objectives in the regions bordering the EU, let me summarize our four key deliverables for the next years. First, we need to open accession negotiations with North Macedonia and Albania. This means fully standing by a clear accession perspective and the principle of own merit. At the same time, we need a more effective negotiation process and refocusing preparations to accelerate tangible results for people in their daily lives. This means enhancing our support for reforms, sub substantially increasing our financial and uh, investment support, with the aim of improving the economy, trade, education, and travel conditions. Second, we will have the Eastern Partner countries implement structural reforms and strengthen their economy, stability, and security. We will continue to stand by the territorial integrity of Ukraine and strengthen its resilience. Third, we will renew our partnership with the Southern Neighborhood based on the more for more principle while focusing on economic development of our partners. Fourth, we will make full use of the neighborhood development and international cooperation instrument and the instrument for pre-accession, increasing their focus on investment. We will also strengthen cooperation with the international financial institutions to support structural reforms. Chairman, honorable members, if confirmed as commissioner, I will seek ongoing and close cooperation with this House, working closely with this committee and other relevant committees. Direct engagement between the European Parliament and our partner co uh, countries is key, and I'm determined to rely fully on parliamentary diplomacy. We need to speak with one voice based on commonly agreed messages. I will make myself available for regular discussions on the state of play of our work. I sincerely hope that this hearing will mark the, begin the, the beginning of an open and fruitful partnership. Thank you for your attention.